What up? How's everybody doing? It's your boy, Brian Clayton, CEO, co-founder of GreenPow. Uh, a little bit about me. I have built two businesses from scratch, got them over eight figures each. Uh, currently working on a company called GreenPow, which is an Uber for lawn care. It's doing $20 million a year in revenue. Built it uh, from the ground up with no outside capital. So there's a little bit of background about what I'm working on, what I'm doing, what I've done. It kind of gives you some context on how I can kind of help you guys and answer some of these questions. Uh, let's get right into it. Today's first question is from Jake, uh, Jake Carly, Jake Carlisle. Uh, how do I make big time connections without feeling insecure? Background of the question. I feel like I would not belong in the, with the big boys, at least not yet, because I haven't done that, done much. I feel like they wouldn't take me seriously in real estate. Okay, um, I think that in today's culture in entrepreneurship, I think there's an over index of networking and connections and like who do I know and who's going to put me on and how do I network my way up to, to the top. And I really believe like a lot of that BS almost doesn't matter like nobody's going to put you on it doesn't matter really doesn't matter who you know it matters what you do it matters what you've done it matters what your business is and how you flat out are kicking your competition's butts and how you're doing better in the market than anybody else and so i really wouldn't worry about like making connections and feeling out of place i would just worry about working 10 times harder than my competition giving 10 times the value to my customers than my competition does, uh, out serving my, my clients, uh, the, the way better than my competitors are doing. And like, if you focus on that stuff, then the security comes with that. And like this feeling of like being like fugazi when you come to the, to the meeting, like if you feel that way, it's probably because you haven't done a whole lot yet. So it's, it's like, if you feel that way, like the way to cure that is just to get to work, get to work, building a business, get to work, Treating your customers like gold, uh, looking at looking at your your business. Uh, prop, I'm assuming you're in property management. I mean, that would just mean like taking the two or three customers you have, or a dozen customers you have, and like just flat out treating them ten times better than your competition does, and then let that speak for itself, and let the let everything just naturally. Uh, come together as 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 you are building your business. It's like this "fake it till you make it" mentality. I, I believe is a little overblown, and like I almost wouldn't even worry about it. If you're worried about that, then odds are you're not focused on the right things in your business, which is like doing a better job than your competitors, delivering a better service than your competitors are doing. So focus on that. That's all. That's the only thing that matters. Next question, Mark McDowell. How important are business cards today and what things should I be sure to include and is the design that important? Uh, business description and background of question. I'm looking to update my business card. Currently, I have a template type business card I like, but I want something different. Are business cards really as important tools as they used to be? What kinds of things can I include on the card and really make them stand out? Is the investment worth it? Uh, elevator pitch, commercial and personal insurance focuses mostly, mostly on small to medium sized business. If you're an in insurance, it probably matters. Uh, I don't think it matters that much and I really wouldn't worry about, I would spend 10 minutes on the business card, like get it ordered, get it on the way on like moo.com or something like that. And then just move on. Like whatever you're worried about on the business card side. I would worry about on the digital side. Like, what's my website look like? Does my website look better than any other competitor that somebody wants to hire for their insurance uh, in my market? Like, do I have the best website in my market for insurance? What does my Instagram look like? What does my uh, Facebook look like? What does my Twitter look like? I would like really focus on my digital uh, presentation, my digital footprint. I would. Yes, I think you need to have a business card, but I would put about 10 minutes into it. I really wouldn't worry about it that much. Um, but I would put like 10 hours into, do I have the best looking website? Because that's your online business card. And that's and that's the first place. Like if 
since nobody's going to hire you off your business card, they are going to hire you for your for their insurance needs off of your website. Does that make sense? Like, I'm not going to like make a buying decision. Like, oh, does this guy's business card look better than this guy's? No, this guy's website looks kick ass, and this guy's website looks like he made it on Wix.com, and it's it's it just smells like cheap. Like, spend spend some money on your website. Uh, few thousand dollars get a good web developer you can get on upwork.com and hire somebody good and focus there I wouldn't worry too much about the business card next question yo Lindy de Govia sorry if I mispronounced your last name best way to raise capital during the early stage of your business we produce and sell decorative pillow covers. We want to expand manufacturing pillow inserts. We resell inserts at the moment, and it's 50% of our monthly income. Making these ourselves will drive down our costs to about one-third the cost of shipping. This will give us a very competitive advantage on Amazon and Walmart marketplaces. Purchasing the equipment, raw stock will be around 90 k with a retail value of over 700 k So it'll leave a lot of room for us for wholesale pricing. We will be the only manufacturer in the Valley, which is a huge market advantage. Who do I approach? Venture capital, angel investor, private investor. I have a business plan, projections, last two years financials, business assets all ready to go. I would resist the urge to raise capital. Uh, I'm, I'm looking at this and, and I'm guessing you only need $90,000. Let's see. Purchasing the equipment and raw stock will be around 90 K. I mean, honestly, uh, Venture capital's out, angel investors out. Uh, those guys typically are looking at like software-based companies that grow really fast. So, so, so get those uh, kind of out of your your thought process. A private investor, maybe like I would like I would go to friends and family, uh, maybe people I'm already doing business with to try to like get a maybe half of the 90k, and then I would like save up the other half. I would really resist the urge to to bring on an, an outside investor on this, and that's just my background. Like I've built two businesses. Uh, my first business was over ten million dollars a year in revenue. My current business is twenty million dollars a year in revenue. Uh, I haven't. I've done both of those businesses with no outside capital, and and a lot of the, like a lot of the reason I was able to sell my first business was because I had no investors. I had no. I had a really clean cap table. So, you know, if you came to me and you said, "Hey, um." I'm doing $5 million a year in pillow covers and um, I, I want to like it, build this like big ass factory and it's going to take $10 million to build it. I've got, I've got 500 K in cash. I'm looking to invest. Uh, I'm looking to raise $3 million and then the rest on debt. Like that's a different story. And like, that's something investors would invest in, but something this small where you only need 90 K to get rolling. Like, Try to get it yourself. Try to get it. Uh, try try to save it with your own revenue. I think revenue is the best form of financing. And then outside of that, friends and family. But I wouldn't waste time like trying to pitch investors for for that kind of deal. All right. How do I come up with my SOPs? I'm assuming you mean standard operating procedures. I don't have any besides in our heads as to how we all do things and would really like to make things move easier for us. I feel this would give us clarity and help us keep growing and teach us and teach how we do things as a team. I have an air conditioning and heating service in Los Angeles and San Bernardino, San Fernando Valley areas. Thank you in advance. Okay, your standard operating procedures. First thing I would do is I would get a copy of The E-Myth by Michael Gerber. I would read that book. I would also listen to it on YouTube or Audible. You can, you can, if you're in the truck, you need to be listening to an audio book, and that's, that's one you need to listen to. That's all that book is about. It's about duplication. It's about processes. It's about how do I create roles in my business and goals around those, those roles. Um, and like just a simple, uh, process of going and creating an org chart for your business, like the receptionist, uh, head of customer service, the lead technician, crew foreman, uh, head of, uh, quality control, 
Who buys all the parts and materials we need? Who does the bookkeeping? Who does the marketing? Who does uh, getting all of the, 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 the peop, uh, text together every day and making sure they all know where they're supposed to go? Who does uh, all of the uh, uh, routing inside of the business? You know, you get what I'm saying. Like, who does all these things? Odds are it's probably your name on most of these roles, and that's okay. But, like, create that org chart. And then as time goes on, you can peel your name off of some of these roles. And every time you peel your name off one of these roles, you create a set of operating procedures that they're supposed to do. And so literally the way you can go about doing this is just document what you do on a daily basis as you're doing one of these roles. Like just legal pad, pen and pad, uh, as you are answering the phone. Like how do you answer the phone every single time? Thank you for calling uh, Marcos Heating and Air. Uh, how might I help you? Uh, yeah, I need a service call. Okay, and then what are like the nine questions you ask them to qualify them and make sure that they're a good fit? And then like creating that down to like a script. Okay, well, that's how we answer the phone. Okay, and then now I'm going out to do the service call. What are the 12 things we do every time we set up on an air conditioning uh, system and like the 12 things we check? I I'm just throwing stuff out there, but like literally going through and just writing this stuff down and then cleaning it up typing it up, making it nice and neat to where you can hand this to somebody and say, okay, this is the operating procedure. This is how we do it every single time. And this is why we do it uh, that way um, can help you create a, a routine, a routine around every one of these roles. So step one, read the E-Myth. Um, another good book to read is called Built to Sell. And that's, that, that book is about creating operations and, and procedures inside of your business so where you could possibly sell it one day. That way it's just not organized chaos every day. So that's that's how I would approach it. Um, and another good book is called Predictable Revenue, which is which is more along the lines of sales, but it's also about how you create these processes and systems inside of your business. Another good book is called The 4-Hour Work Week. I'm sure you've heard of that one. Um, that book is not about working four hours a week. That book is about delegation and creating spec docs and creating routines and, and being able to delegate to people. And so I would read those books and apply everything that they're talking about into your business little by little. And I would set a goal for like maybe a year from today to have like some operating procedures and just for like some of the easy stuff in terms of what you do for the, the simple service calls what you do every time somebody picks up the phone what do you do uh, what's the what's the morning routine when everybody comes to the shop and 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 how do they get their 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 work orders for the day all of these things need to be routine routinized okay next question from Robin Turpin when starting a business do you think it's necessary to have a social media presence in person uh, this business description in-person interactions are much more comfortable for me. Elevator pitch. As an artist, I feel I, I help people feel moments of calm through oil paintings and sunsets. Okay. Um, is a social media presence necessary for every business? Most likely, yes. Um, I can't really think of one business, unless you're in some kind of industrial B2B, really niche where these guys don't really spend much time on social media or don't care, then probably not as important. But as you get more towards like selling stuff to people and consumers, yes, it's it's very important. Especially, I'm guessing that you say as an artist, I help people feel moments of calm through my oil paintings. I'm guessing you create beautiful paintings and they're calming and like let's let people discover that on social media. Like that's the that's one of the one of the best, most congruent types of products for social media. Like Instagram is 100% visual. What your your product is visual. Quite frankly, you should have the most kick-ass uh, Instagram account on Instagram for the type of art you create. It's got to be awesome. And I'm you could probably just focus on that one social media channel and sell product through Instagram. Another one would be Pinterest. Pinterest is all visual. Uh, I would I would make sure all of my stuff on Pinterest looks as good as it can. Um, nowadays, TikTok is getting hot. Maybe, uh, you know, uh, little videos of you creating these works of art. People like that stuff. And this is how people can discover you and your product and your talents for free 
to me is probably one of the best uh, investments of your time is creating like just a kick-ass social media uh, presence on probably two or three. I wouldn't like try to do all of them because it can be overwhelming. We'll probably focus on on Instagram first, then Pinterest, then maybe TikTok. And, and then as time goes on, as you do this stuff, you know, kind of what we were talking about in the last question, you can create processes around okay, this is how I create the content, and this is how I touch up the content, and this is how I create all of the content around the content, uh, like hashtags and descriptions, and then this is how I put it on YouTube, uh, Pinterest, TikTok, Instagram, Instagram stories, and like now I've got uh, like a little helper, maybe a virtual assistant at every little step of the way to help me with this stuff to where you got a little content machine. I mean, I think most every business is going to be like in the content business in some way, shape, or form to, to kind of keep themselves out there and help people discover them. So to short answer, yes. Long answer is yes again and create processes and routines around around getting the best social media footprint you can. And start small. Focus on one. Maybe just focus just on Instagram for two or three months. Get it rolling. Get your follower count up. Um, and, and then maybe as time goes on, you're making a little bit of money. Maybe you hire somebody off of Upwork.com to help you with it uh, for maybe two or three or four or five hundred dollars a month. They can help you grow your following count, help you grow your engagement. And next thing you know, it's paying for itself. People are actually buying your artwork from Instagram, so it's not necessarily like an expense; it's an investment. Next question from Rohit Gupta. Sorry if I mispronounce your name. Question they ask: I have a business idea and I've done some research now. I'm not sure which direction to go. Uh, background. I'm thinking of designing the glove as I have done research to cover the basics, but not sure what the next step is. Designing the glove. I'm, I'm, I'm guessing it's a product, a glove. I don't, I don't know. But... I think what holds a lot of new business owners up is like this analysis paralysis. Okay, I've, I have the business idea. I've done the research. Now I'm not sure what direction to go. Like have a bias towards action. Have a bias like like all, like an idea is worth like 20 bucks. The idea is stillborn. The only thing to bring the idea to life is action. The only thing like I know that sounds tr like almost condescending it's so simple but I, I don't mean to be condescending I think a lot of new entrepreneurs just get stuck in this kind of planning phase and they don't get to work so for, for like I'm just guessing you say I, I'm thinking of designing the glove as I have done some research to cover the basics but I'm not sure if this is my next step I mean if it's an actual glove then then create a prototype like create like actually go to work on creating the prototype for it like you're going to have to have some skills around this kind of stuff if you don't have the skills acquire them or or reach out to people who do but like close the gap between whatever like real is and planning and and take the next step and and do that now and stop doing all of this planning because the the Mike Tyson quote everybody has a plan until they get punched in the nose is so true when it comes to business you can sit there and plan 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 all you want but nothing matters until you go into the marketplace and you you get people to pay you money for something you're doing next question Christopher Joseph is a pre-launch strategy recommended for software product still in development and do you have any tips, resources, better to learn how to create a proper pre-launch strategy? I am currently alpha testing with a small group of target customers for my software tool for content creators and streamers. I was recommended by my CTO to do a pre-launch to build hype, continue engage interests, and expand our email list. She says we could do this pre-launch product before the product's finalized. We are thinking along the lines of coming soon landing page. I would like to know your thoughts. Uh, short answer, yes. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, the sooner you can get the product out there, the better. This really goes in line with the previous question. Um, you have to get this thing out there because you have all of these validate these assumptions in your head that aren't validated. And I guarantee you like half or more of them are wrong. And you don't know 
you don't really know what you're building or what, what problem you're solving until people start interacting with it. So the sooner you can do that, the better. Uh, the, the book, The Lean Startup by Eric Reese, that's all that book is about, is the what they call build, measure, learn, which means like build, get it out there, measure what's happening, learn, repeat. And that's the beautiful thing about software. Like the last guy I think was built was making a glove. It's a little harder with like a physical product because you kind of have this long like waterfall process to like design, build, and get it to the marketplace. But with software, it's more iterative, means meaning like you can like make changes on the fly and fix things as you go and and listen to user feedback and bake that into the product and make it better and better and better every day by constantly releasing. So your CTO is correct. Whatever you have out there. Whatever you have done, get it out there, get people using it so you can so you can get feedback. And also you're gonna find it's a lot harder to get users than you thought. A lot of times software entrepreneurs uh, will just go into the lab for like six months or a year, build, 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 and then like we launch it and they're like, holy crap, how do we get customers? And so you you're gonna learn that lesson sooner uh, now. And like it's important to uh, innovate on product and it's also important to innovate on growth so you have to do both of those at the same time another another quote uh by uh reed hoffman who was the founder of uh linkedin he says if you're not embarrassed by your first release then you waited too long and so that means if you're not if you're not embarrassed by the first release of your product then you waited too long all righty Last question, Jordan Shaw. What is the best route for us to increase sales and users? We want to start advertising on YouTube as we believe the best result will come from YouTube, but we also are open to other suggestions. If perhaps outbound sales direct to business would yield greater return. Alrighty, business description. Our software just hit the AppSumo marketplace. We want to go to market with AppSumo to get exposure and feedback. We have used our software for our own business agency, and we believe it's a good tool for small businesses in general. Any industry with sales or agent staff is great for our system. We need to figure out the best path to grow and sustain. Our software has been used by marketers in the past. Um, Elevator Pitch, I am co-founder of FunnelBolt, all-in-one marketing SaaS solution for business. We help businesses convert leads into sales without complex coding or endless integrations. With built-in landing pages and custom forms, FunnelBolt allows businesses to communicate with their leads and customers to drive more sales and conversions with text messages, ringless voicemail. FunnelBolt is free for 14 days. Okay, so... Sounds like you're building a SaaS marketing solution for small businesses. Definitely a need for that. It's, it's a very competitive market. Um, so the answer to your question, how, like what's the best channel? The, the, the answer is you don't know. And so you have to test. You have to like you have to fire bullets, then cannonballs. So I wouldn't like just say, oh, it's going to be YouTube. Let's just throw everything to YouTube. What I would do is is I would I would start creating content for YouTube in terms of like like a day in the life of your customer and how they can use your product to convert more sales. And I would try to make it as as, as uh, real life as possible. Like, I, I don't, let's say like, uh, to use the uh, HVAC example earlier, like focus on one use case, okay? HVAC guys can use uh, this software to convert more sales and therefore, this is how they do it. This is the workflow and like a YouTube video on how to do that. And then so like you create maybe do that for like 90 days and, and try to measure, okay, are we getting web traffic off of that? Are we getting free trials off of that? Is it worth our time to continue doing YouTube? It may be a great channel or it may be a dud, but like test it. Um, odds are like SEO is probably going to be uh, something you need to look at. Uh, most every SaaS company needs to have some component of SEO, and so that's something that you're probably going to have to get good at. Um, paid performance marketing, maybe, but you're up against a lot of competitors like 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 uh, uh, Marketo and and uh, Marketo and, and a bunch of other guys like that. And so you may find the unit economics are going to be tough to crack on 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 performance marketing. But the the answer to the question is you have a you have a digital product. You have to learn how to grow it. It's going to be a long, hard slog. You have to test different channels. 
you have to uh, measure the results in every channel and you have to figure out what's working for you and and odds are it's going to be like like the long game you're going to have to uh, play it out see how it goes measure measure if you're getting any traction in any of the channels and then and then lean in onto the ones that that, that are working Hope that helps. That's it for today, folks. I enjoyed it. Uh, anybody wants to reach me, you can hit me up uh, here uh, in AO. And I uh, look forward to